Why, hello there, every pony. If you have a moment, I'd like to share a heartwarming tale with you all. A musical one, if you will. We all know music and caroling are some of the biggest pieces that make up the holiday. However, in this story, one pony despised music so much that he put the whole spirit of heartwarming Eve in jeopardy. His name is Mr. Humbuck. A pretty fitting name, if you ask me. He's a stallion as cold as a winter's night and as prickly as a pine needle. And on this particular hearth swarming, he devised something so horrible with the intent to ruin it all. That is, until he came across a trio of plucky young fillies. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Why don't we just start from the beginning? was a gleeful winter morning, and gust of hearth-swarming spirit swept through the air. Ponies all throughout Ponyville were each finding their own ways to express such spirit. Through the decorations they hung, the hot cocoa they shared, or the gifts they wrapped. However, at the corner of every pony's favorite sweet shop, three little fillies have set up their own way of expressing their holiday spirit. With a cardboard box as their stage, and three sheets of lyrics for each of them to follow, they're just about ready to begin. But who are these giddy young fillies, you might ask? Why, they're none other than the Cutie Mark Crusaders. At least, that's the name of their secret club. Are you girls sure this is a good idea? I mean, I'm not so sure if we're cut out for Carol and Cutie Marks. That would be Sweetie Belle. She can be a bit timid and isn't the most confident. But she has a kind heart and is as sweet as the frosting atop a gingerbread cookie. I really think we should have practiced at least a little before actually coming out here to sing. And here we have Scootaloo, perhaps the rowdiest member of their group. And she surely isn't afraid to speak her mind, which can lead them all into bouts of trouble from time to time. I'm telling y'all, this is the perfect plan. After this, we're sure to see those Carolyn cutie marks pop up on our flanks. And if we don't, then this will be our practice before the real thing. Then last, but most certainly not least, is Apple Bloom. Though she can tend to be a bit careless and restless, her heart is big and is ready to put forth the effort into anything she wishes to accomplish. Together, not only do they share a bond as special as friendship, but they all share the same love and passion for this glorious holiday. Quite a promising group of foals, wouldn't you say? Well, little did they know, their true test of holiday spirit was headed their way like a storm cloud over a flickering flame. Hey! You girls all set? Sure are. Thanks again for letting us carol outside your bakery, Pinky. No problem, girls. Remember, if you get too cold, feel free to come inside for some fresh steamy hot cocoa. Have fun! All right! Y'all ready to get this started? Um... Uh, yeah, I don't um, know. maybe? Come on, y'all. Where's your heart swarming spirit? We've got the spirit. We're just not sure if that's what's going to help us sing. You won't know if you don't try. Y'all got your lyrics ready? Yeah. Right here. All right. And a one, and a two, and a... And so, despite their doubts, they began to carol for all of Ponyville to hear. Sure, their pitch wasn't perfect, and although they did have some trouble keeping in time, they attracted a few curious listeners regardless. There's something about seeing such rosy-cheeked, ambitious youths giving it their all to carol for the love of the holiday that warms the heart of any pony who should come across them. 
Within moments, a few turned to many, and the confidence in themselves began to grow the more that came to listen. Certainly, there's nothing that could ruin such a beautiful moment. What exactly is going on here? What is the meaning of all this commotion? Oh dear, I suppose I spoke a bit too soon. A stallion dressed in a black coat and top hat forced his way to the front of the crowd. With his head held high and eyes that gave off a glare so disapproving, the ponies around him dared not to look his way. He walked up to the three bewildered fillies, fixing his bow tie as he looked on most displeased. Well, care to explain yourselves? Nothing, mister. Just some good old caroling to get every pony in the heart swarming Eve spirit. Well, now, isn't that just precious? What a wonderful thing to do. Oh, well, thanks, mister. Did you like it? Did I like it? Oh, darling, I didn't just like it. Then you loved it? Oh, no, not at all. In fact, I found it to be quite dreadful. <gasps> well, what do you mean? Oh, please, must I spell it out for you? All three of you are off key not keeping in time with one another, and are clearly wasting your time. Do any of you even know how to keep a rhythm? If I were you, I'd go back to hoofball, or whatever it is you children do in your spare time these days. Anything other than this. Poor Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle hung their heads in sorrow and shame. But Scootaloo wasn't ready to allow this heartless heathen to berate her friends and let him get away with it. And so, she rightfully protested. Hey, what's your problem? Who even are you anyway, some lousy caroling critic? Who am I? Why, my name is Humbuck. Mr. Humbuck. And my problem is that you fillies need to take your atrocious singing elsewhere. Preferably somewhere with thick walls so that none of it can be heard. Oh, yeah? And what if we don't? Well, if that isn't enough to drive you away, then you'll surely be embarrassed to be singing the wrong lyrics. But they're not wrong. Are you sure? Yeah, take a look for yourself. Well, will you look at that? I suppose they are. With a filthy grin, Mr. Humbuck crumpled up the sheets into one large ball, then dropped it to the ground into a melted puddle of slush and ice. He stomped on it relentlessly and splashed the icy cold water onto the crusaders, which sent chills up their spines. My mistake. Carry on, then. That is, as long as you know all the lyrics by heart, which I'm assuming you don't. <laughs> Mr. Humbuck <laughs> laughed his way through the crowd, leaving the three fillies saddened and broken-hearted. The crowd did their best to reassure and cheer them up with encouragement and pats on their heads, but it just wasn't enough to bring back their spirits. The town's ponies dispersed, and the Crusaders began to deliberate. I told you we should have practiced. Practice or no practice? I got a feeling that Mr. Humbuck would have shut us down no matter what. So, does this mean we're not getting our Carolyn cutie marks? Never mind the cutie marks. We gotta find out what this fella's deal is and why he's so grumpy. I think he was a little more than just grumpy, Apple Bloom. Either way, ain't you girls at least curious? Um, not really. I mean, maybe we should. Then come on, let's follow him. Ugh, seriously? And off they went, following Mr. Humbuck, but kept a safe distance as to not be spotted. They observed as he trudged through town, leaving a trail of dismay in his wake. He cantered to the second hoof shop, intrigued by the record player spouting a famous heartwarming tune. Good morning, sir. See anything you like? Hmm, not at all. Well, how's about this here record player? It'd make a nice addition to any household. I have no particular use for it. However, how much for the record it's playing? Oh, well, if it's just the record you're after, I'll give it to you for free. You just can't put a price on hearthswarming, am I right? Oh, certainly. Hey, what are you- <gasps> I wouldn't have put a price on it either. It's most definitely worth nothing. And without a farewell or goodbye, Mr. Humbuck moved on, as the sales pony looked down sorrowfully at the shattered pieces he left behind. He then came across a little workshop 
tucked away from the public eye. One with no fancy sign or eye-catching coat of paint, but a happy-go-lucky mare who greeted him instantly. Hello there, sir. Care to stop by? I've got musical instruments of all sorts craft by hoof. Instruments, you say? That's right. Made from scratch. And they sound wonderful. <laughs> Care to take a listen? Not quite. Uh, 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 well, I also take commissions. You name the instrument and I'll put my hooves to work for you. It'll be done before you know it. Madam, tell me, just how is business for you? Oh, well, except to say it's pretty slow. The last customer I had was about weeks ago. And what does that tell you, my dear? Sure, business could be better, but this is a passion of mine. I, I just can't let it go. Perhaps you should reconsider. If I were you, I'd close this hopeless shop down for good and put my hooves to better use. Try crafting things more worthwhile than these ugly, petty instruments. The mare's heart broke in two, and she turned away to hide the tears that began to stream down her face. Mr. Humbug, however, paid her no mind and continued his brisk walk through town. This guy's one big jerk. I say we help the ponies he's walking all over instead. We can't, not yet. If we don't put a stop to him first, then he'll just keep on making every pony else feel miserable. Apple Bloom's right. He'll make every heartwarming a disaster if we don't do something. Uh, fine. I guess you're right. Now come on! We can't lose them! The three fillies rushed onward to find that Mr. Humbuck had met another group of young, carefree carolers. He plugged his ears and stopped them in the middle of their song. The carolers looked up at him in fear and bewilderment as he unleashed a storm of animosity. Uh, I was wondering why my head was pounding. Out of tune, the lot of you. I hope you can get a refund from whatever class taught you to sing. Seems it was a waste if you ask me. Good riddance. Now go do something productive. The town's ponies gawked and glared at Mr. Humbuck, and as heartless as he was, he cared not for how they perceived him. To him, they were invisible, as if the only thing that mattered in the world was him and his word. Further along the path, Mr. Humbuck was approached by an exhilarated pony carrying a stack of flyers, and it seemed like he had some big news to share. Excuse me, sir. Have you heard? That depends. If you mean all the blasted caroling, then yes, I've had my fair share. Well, if you liked that, then you're gonna love the news. Ponyville is being paid a visit by the Canterlot Choir this heart's warming eve. The Canterlot Choir, you say? That's right! Only the most talented group of angelic voices in Equestria. And to think they're actually coming down here to Ponyville! Isn't it exciting? Here, have a flyer! Hmm, this is exciting indeed. Why don't you go and keep spreading the word? Every pony deserves to know of this immediately. You betcha! In the meantime, I have much planning to do. A dubious, evil grin spread across Mr. Humbuck's face, and the Cutie Mark Crusaders looked to each other in dire dismay. They could tell by the tone of his voice that he was brewing something dastardly. Apple Bloom and her friends followed Mr. Humbuck all the way back to his lonely little cottage nestled within the outskirts of the Everfree Forest. It's so far away from the rest of the town that no pony would ever have known it was there but I suppose that was most likely the intent. Mr. Humbug unlocked and entered his cottage, and the fillies hid themselves behind a bush to brew a plan of their own. This is where he lives? Ugh, place gives me the chills. And don't say, Because it's cold, duh! I was hoping you wouldn't say it. Come on, girls. We gotta go see what he's up to. I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, now what? Hmm. A Cantalot choir coming to Ponyville to fill the streets with even more disgusting, pathetic sounds to get the town's ponies all giddy with childlike excitement. Well, not if I have anything to say about it. Every year is 
the same old thing Pony's Prance, Pony's Sing. Oh, isn't it just grand? What if today was the end of the holiday? I'm mad, you say? Well, listen, my friend. Imagine a world of peace and quiet destroyed by a song, and those who sing it a quaint and precious winter wonderland Ruined by the ponies and their sour note band There won't be another half-warming It's done, I shall decree The day shall come, the one I've been dreaming And it's all thanks to me, yes, it's thanks to me. <laughs>
Well, guess what, dear children? Sometimes the truth can be painful, so I suggest you three get over it and do something more productive with your time. Mr. Humbug huffed and sneered as he turned his back to them. He walked toward his cottage, and Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo were both too afraid to pursue a retort. But Apple Bloom stood up and called out to Mr. Humbug one last time. Mr. Humbug! Why do you hate hearts for me so much? Humbug stopped in his tracks and returned to the Phillies. Apple Bloom almost felt she had made a horrible mistake, but there was no turning back. You all think I just hate hearts warming. Why, you three truly don't understand. Yes, I'm not quite fond of the holiday at all, but it's all due to the dreadful, awful music and caroling that comes with it. Take that away, and this would be a much more enjoyable time of year. Then, why do you hate the music so much? Yeah, it's one of the best things about heartwarming. You children have been brainwashed your whole lives, haven't you? Your parents must have told you that anything and everything you do is fantastic, as long as you give it your best. When I was your age, I was once fed the same filthy lies. I thought I could sing, just as you did. So of course my parents encouraged me to join the Ponyville Youth Choir. You were part of the choir? Yes, indeed. What happened? Well... My parents knew that singing had been a passion of mine. So naturally, they thought the choir would have been the perfect place for me. A chance to make friends and express myself. Instead, I ended up learning a valuable lesson during my time there. You see, my director was a very honest stallion, and he yearned for perfection. If one of us was off-key, he would not sugarcoat it. We're all under constant judgment but none were judged as harshly as me. I had begun to feel that there was nothing I could do to prove to him that I had what it takes. So, then what did you do? Did you prove him wrong? You quit, right? Neither. Hearth's Warming Eve was just around the corner, and our director had one big show planned to put on for the town. I saw it as my chance to finally show him what I could do. I'd hoped that the holiday spirit would be enough to maybe help me prove my worth. It was the first day of rehearsal, and in the end, my last day in the choir. We were all gathered in the auditorium. Not moments after we'd begun to sing, he silenced us. He escorted me out of the auditorium, looked to me, and gave me the most important piece of advice I give to you now. What's that? Don't waste your time pursuing a dream you have no business chasing. What? That can't be right. Oh yes, my dears, it's that very advice that's helped me through the years. Certainly no nonsense like holiday spirit and whatnot. What a foolish child I was. Now I'd hate for you three to make a similar mistake. Apple Bloom, is that you? Sweetie Belle, just what are you and your friends doing here? Our crusaders turned to see none other than their sisters, who just so happened to be passing by. Applejack and Rarity approached them, baffled to find them at a stranger's cottage. Not only that, but a stranger's cottage decorated with awfully familiar-looking decorations that had mysteriously gone missing from their own homes. What in tarnation is going on here? Ain't those signs the same ones I stood up in our yard? And aren't those the same lights I had hung up around my boutique? <laughs> do these children belong to you too? Yes, they do. Then I'll have you know these three have been following me around town, and have been hanging around my yard all afternoon. That's not true! I mean, it kind of is. Shh! Not only that, but they've proven to be rather bothersome with their constant pranking. Knocking on my door and hiding behind bushes and now this. To think, all I wanted to do was enjoy a quiet day all to myself. Well, thanks to them, that's ruined now. Oh, I do apologize. Please allow me to take these decorations down, and we'll be out of your mane. Thank you. Good night, children. <laughs> Come, Sweetie Belle. You're staying inside for the rest of the day. But rarity! No buts! Now let's go. Scootaloo, you too. I'll take you back to your aunt. I'm sure she'll love hearing about this as well. 
Oh, boy. What's the matter with you, Apple Bloom? Bothering this poor stallion with your friends? Haven't I told you pulling pranks on strangers ain't right? Sure, a prank between friends is fine every now and again, but not on some poor stranger. But Applejack, you don't understand. Then please, help me understand. He... He... He what? I... I just... Come on, you can tell me what's on your mind when we get home. Mr. Humbug watched from his window as the fillies were guided away from his cottage and rubbed his hooves together as he relished in his victory. Finally, now that those blasted children are out of the way, I can get back to work. Mr. Humbug happily sunk into his chair, grabbed his quill, and continued to write. Page after page, his pile of written letters had grown, and his plot neared its completion. Hmm. One letter from every pony in Ponyville should do the trick. They all must appear different. Different writing and different names. One from Lyra Heartstrings, one from Miss Cheerily, one from Mr. Cake, one from Mrs. Cake. Oh, this plan can't possibly fail. Once the Cantalot Choir reads all the hate and disdain from the ponies of Ponyville, they'll feel obligated to cancel their concert. And what will Ponyville do once they hear the news and their heartwarming spirit is crushed? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. But I cannot wait to find out. Carefully and meticulously, he folded up some letters and stuffed them into envelopes. Others he rolled up and tied with string, all to sell the idea that each and every letter had been written by some pony other than him. Hours went by as he filled his bag to the brim with letters until he was satisfied. He stuffed so many inside that he could barely keep the bag sealed. On a race against time, Mr. Humbug grabbed his bag and headed out into the cold, whilst our brave, plucky crusaders are nowhere to be seen. <laughs>